Now, next question. You mentioned some key components earlier, but I'd love to know how does the upper elementary program differ from the lower elementary program? Can you tell me more? Yes. Yeah, that's a great question because when I answered your last question about how the day is different, it's really not different, but it's what is going in within those programs within the day that mm -hmm. makes upper elementary different. Mm -hmm. And Kelly mentioned a little bit about us going deeper into all of the core subjects, mm -hmm. right? But there are some components that I'm just going to list and then we can dive deeper into them. Mm -hmm. So we talked about our specials. So PE is something that's new to upper elementary or to the elementary. So in the other uh, lower elementary, they don't have a special PE teacher. Their PE guide is their lower elementary mm -hmm. guide. So in, in upper elementary, they have this specialist that's just for outdoors, just for physical education and wilderness skills. We have Echo Hill. We're going to go into that. What is Echo Hill? What is MMUN? We do something fun called Biography Day. We have portfolios. We do camp outs. We do going outs. We have the school play. So uh, Kelly, which one do you want to talk about first? Great question. So <laughs> if, if I was approaching the upper L, like what's different about the lower L? So let's say I graduate, I move up from the, the third grade, the, the lower L into the fourth grade. Some main differences that I would be excited about at the beginning of this school year that us teachers are going to want to talk to you about like right off the bat as a parent or child is our trip to Echo Hill. So we're going to take a, a two night overnight trip to the Eastern Shore of Maryland to get the children some space, to give them some bonding time, and also to give them some really, really cool outdoor and like you said, more high adventure wilderness skill instruction. Mm -hmm. Now, Echo Hill has become a part of Butler's program and then it's like a tradition and we look forward to going there every year. And this year it was fantastic. And we were able to get a really cool bunk bed situations in these really nice semi-permanent tents. And we had a great adult to child ratio in terms of the chaperones that we were bringing from school and then the staff that they provide from Echo Hill. And I would say all in all, the children will report a great uh, sense of bonding, community building. And we did that right at the beginning of the year. And we look to do that every year at the beginning of the year to make that a retreat for us in the upper elementary program. In addition to Echo Hill, we do, you know, try to do a little bit more of the event planning so that you might not have in the lower L. So we'll do an overnight camp out just as the upper L. We might do a six year trip at the end of your upper elementary experience as well. That could be like a high adventure or a bigger deal that you can put on the yearly schedule. And then Kelly mentioned, and I want to talk about this one next, but is MMUN, which is our trip in the winter and spring to New York City to do the model Montessori United Nations. So a lot of these like major events on the schedule that you wouldn't have traditionally in the lower L. And also they all involve a little bit of going further away from home. So there's a little more independence required. The children need to be a little bit more mentally and physically prepared to spend time away from their parents, to pack appropriately. And we're trying to give them those like practical life skills of what is it like to maybe go to a different city to go like on a big trip, like to MMUN, we kind of wait for the sixth or fifth year to broach that with them, but we do want to prepare them to come and, and it's really big work for them. And also that's like a preview of middle school as well. So we're preparing them for the overnight trip that they might take in the middle school as well. I can turn it back over to you. I think the next I main thing, Echo Hill a little bit okay, more, yeah. you're probably thinking, wow, that's a lot of trips. Yeah. <laughs> And I do want to let you know that from upper elementary throughout the rest of uh, the intermediates in our high school program, like the ninth grade program that we have, they are going to be doing more of those overnight trips and they do it every year and sometimes more than once a year. Mm -hmm. I think Kelly just mentioned so far two or three that we're going to do. We have the Echo Hill, we have the camp out, yep. we have the MMUN. So there's a lot. I want to talk a little bit more about Echo Hill and how that helps with the sciences. Something that I really enjoyed from our trip totally. was I got to go on a boat and we studied the bay. And I mean, I've been living in, I'm not from Maryland. I've been living in Maryland for eight or nine years now. And I had never known so much about the bay just from this like one trip mm -hmm. on a boat, but we took the children are assigned to different groups. And each day they have about two to three classes and the classes uh, teach them about nature. So there's a class about the bay studies. We learned about the different animals and plants that live in the bay or rely on the bay at least some point in their life. We talked about seeds and roots and fruits and vegetables. We talked about food waste and I thought that was really interesting. Every day, the food there was so good. Every day they would feed us, right? And you can have as much food as you'd like 
Um, but what they ask is that you only take what you will eat. And at the end, what's stuff left on your plate is called slop. And it's also stuff left on planet mm -hmm. um, slop. So every day they measured the slop that was left on your plate. And we tried to, after each meal, have as little slop as possible. Mm -hmm. And it was just so fun and interesting to see the children see their impact on the planet, right? Like how much waste am I adding to our planet? Luckily, the food can all go back into the garden, but it was an interesting conversation about what is left on our mm -hmm. planet. So different conversations about life. So we were talking about life sciences. So anything that has to do with plants and animals, but we also talked about like the physical aspects of it too. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the water, talking about the land. We had this walk through the marsh that I thought was amazing. We talked about what is a marsh and how a pond becomes a marsh and all of the plants that grow out of it. So I, I had a lot of fun as my first time going to Echo Hill. Well, that really is kind of like the mission of our whole school, right? Let alone the upper elementary classroom is how does nature go hand in hand with learning? And so to take children on a two day nature based field trip retreat to start off the school year really gets us in the, the, the mode of learning about nature, learning about ecosystems, learning about the Maryland state kind of ecology and watershed in general. What is the bay? How is it formed? Where is all this water coming from? And it happens to be coming from exactly where we go to school right now, which is in kind of the rocky mountainous area, almost mountainous area of Montgomery County near the Potomac River. So that is a great opportunity for us. And I think it, it fits with the, like you said, the sciences or the skills that we're trying to build in the mm -hmm. classroom, which are to be curious, to research, to inspect. When we go on our hikes to notice all the seasons, all the, the ways and the forms of plants and, and the parts of the plant they can take over the seasons. And especially doing that right on the fall, when we get to see like the leaves changing, mm -hmm. the sunlight getting you know shorter every day. Um, it even got a little bit cold at Echo Hill that first night yeah. where we could see our breath the next morning when we got up. Yeah. It was a really cool time of the year and experience for us. Um, it was just like a nice cycle because yeah. the lessons that they learn in the classroom, they take it to Echo Hill mm -hmm. and they're like, oh yeah, we talked about this and we're diving deeper into it. Mm -hmm. And then we take it back to the classroom. Mm -hmm. Remember at Echo Hill when we did so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's just like this big cycle and then we do it all over again and they get to take different classes the next time they go. Now, that's not the only you know, <laughs> thing that we do, though. We plan a lot of trips. We plan going out throughout the year. Like I, we took a group to the embassy recently. We had another embassy visit via Zoom as we're preparing for the Montessori Model Unations, which is kind of like our second semester main trip. That's for some of the older students. And then we'll definitely prepare them over the course of the three years to become ready for adolescence, which is this fully formed child. Now they're an adolescent, they're like a young adult, and they should have an even more degree of freedom and independence from their, their family. We're trying to give them like the stepping stones to get there. What is like a, a two night overnight with the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade class that could help you prepare for a week long uh, mission trip. I know the middle school is planning uh, to take to California over their spring uh, semester. So those are the skills definitely that we're trying to prepare them is that independence and what it's like to prepare to be a young adult. Well, that's first of all, very interesting. And I do love how everything is woven together and how nature is incorporated in that you're on a hike, but you're learning about, you know, biology or whatever, ecology, it depends. Right. And I love that continuous, you know, learning process that you don't even realize you're learning. That's, that's what my son always tells me. He's like, Oh, we did this. I'm like, Oh, you were learning this, but he has no idea. We didn't learn anything. We, today. we, we, we really, we put them in the right position to learn right yeah. that in a way that doesn't seem like it's learning like mm -hmm. we're putting them in the right situation at the right time yeah. right yeah yeah i mean of course there are formal lessons mm -hmm. where i'm like i'm inviting you to this lesson and we're going to do fractions or yeah. whatever it is those are the lessons that they're like of course i got a lesson today mm -hmm. but sometimes there are those impromptu or mm -hmm. subtle lessons that we give them they're like i didn't have a lesson today mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you might hear that from your your child a lot mm -hmm.